Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I've upgraded Realism Overhaul to 8.2 and RP0, the tech tree, to 0.27. I've uh, picked up some additional contracts so let's take a look at those. Uh, we've got the atmospheric scans on Kerbin and uh, initially I thought about take, uh, taking that as a way to test our boiler plate of a potential capsule for launching a Kerbal into orbit, but it's not really a good idea. Um, it did give me the uh, advance, uh, the funds necessary to finance a little bit more pod design. I've already designed the boilerplate at least. We are going to try and launch it on a slightly modified version of the, of the launcher we used in the previous episode, the Telemon. So that's the plan there. And I'll show you what, what's coming up. But uh, science data from space around Kerbin. I think this is the contract we'll try to fulfill in order to uh, along the way as we test that boilerplate. Uh, we have some complications though, as I'll talk about. We already have the Explore the Moon contract, and we still need a moon lander. And then uh, human space flight. I don't know how to recruit humans in this game, but I suppose we'll absorb the Kerbals into the human race and that'll be fine. They're they're just a slightly different color. They're they're more or less the same same plan form, you know, arms, legs, a head. So I guess they're close enough, right? Alright. So uh yeah, let's go to the VAB and I'll talk more about our mission. Okay, so this might look like a capsule, but it's not. It's also very annoying because for some reason the offsets don't work. At least every time I try and offset these things to make it look proper, like so, they pop out again. Just when I leave the VAB too, it's not even uh, when I try and uh, save and then reload. Anyway, this is the actual command pod. This is our boilerplate command pod. And the downside to the boilerplate is that, well, first of all, we load lead ballast in to make sure it weighs the same. I've added hydrazine and we've got hydrazine thrusters here. But the downside to the boilerplate is it does not have a heat shield. And so that's one thing we're not going to be able to test. We're going to be able to test all the rest of the launch, orbital maneuvering, communications, all very essential, but not the heat shield. But otherwise it's the same size and so hopefully it'll work out all right. Uh, we are not using a launch escape tower because I I just don't do that, I guess. Um, we'll imagine that they use ejection seats. That's that's the that's the orbital way to go, right? Um, though that's not uh, doable with kerosene liquid oxygen, I guess. They use the ejection seats on on the Gemini missions because they were using the the what you got hypergolics. So anyway but that is a different story. We've got an, a guidance unit. I unlocked uh, some guidance units. This is a new thing in the new version of the RP0. And so now we have limitations. See, this part allows control of vessels up to 120 tons. This is the one I've got on here. And in fact, uh, you can see I very narrowly skirted that limit. Uh, the pod itself here allows control of vessels of up to five tons. So the pod would be able to manage itself and its service module, but it wouldn't be able to manage the whole rocket. We'd have to add one of these uh, guidance units anyway. So that is something I'll have to plan on doing. They've made other modifications to the game. Uh, one thing is that I no longer can configure stuff to MMH N204. That's why I'm using Hydrazine right now, uh, because MMH N204 is not at our tech level. So those are uh, so I only get to flip between hydrazine, nitrogen tetroxide, helium, nitrogen, HTP, and then sometimes the tech level shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Don't ask me how that works out. But anyway, uh, I think they said something about requiring ullage for the one kilonewton thruster. So that's another thing. You notice I put four of them down here, and that's just to give it enough thrust. And uh, yep. So there's uh, there's a uh, hydrazine tank. It's got a lot of hydrazine in, about uh, 1.4 tons. So that's a nice service module tank. This 
I hope this opera yeah it's a service module alright so that's there the rest of our rocket is it's a little bit undersized on the boosters we had to make the boosters shorter because otherwise they they extended like all the way up to here kind of thing so wasn't sure about the look of that I don't know if this will get into orbit it's a pretty close call it all depends on whether we can burn enough from this. The service module is actually the part that gets into orbit. The rest of this all comes back down. So the service module has to do a little bit of a burn to get the capsule into orbit. Then it all depends on how much time that's going to take. Anyway, this is an unmanned pod. We've got barometers, but I want to think about adding some other science here. I'm not satisfied. Barometers probably won't do... Uh, actually, the barometers are mainly because I was thinking about doing that contract with this, but this, this is pretty expensive to be doing that contract. Um, I think I'm going to unlock the Science Junior. How much does it cost? A thousand, wow. I'm going to add it to the service module. Alright, we have a Science Junior. We'll transmit the data. We won't bring it back. The numbers are getting a little bit dicier. Hmm. So I'm thinking about it, and obviously what I've done is I did dump the second stage on the Telemon. That's one thing I did, and that was partly because of the mass limits, and partly because at the time I didn't think I needed it. But we're getting pretty hefty here. Maybe I should... Hmm. I can't dump the lead ballast. That's simulating the mass of the actual thing. For the real pod, we can move the avionics down here because uh, the pod can carry the five tons. But for now, I think we need it up there because otherwise we don't have any way to control it. So, how about we add two? So here's a plot for you. We add another guidance unit here to simulate the one that would be on there and we reduce the amount of lead ballast up here because uh, the mass of this is 0.4 so if we take a look at what our mass is or do we have the right mass? hold on no we've got 1.4 alt well that includes this decoupler though no that mass is right in fact we should put this here because that's going to be a mass there for the relaunch. I seem to have a lot of work to do on this. Oh, but I'm not going to be carrying a Science Junior with me on that launch. Okay, I need some excuse to dump some lead ballast here. Just, just for you to know, the reason why this doesn't have a heat shield at the bottom and why we're not bringing it back, I, didn't, uh, I don't think I touched upon that, is because we don't have the right sized heat shield. Uh, we've got a 0 0.625, we've got a 1.25, we've got a 1 meter. This procedural heat shield isn't configured for RP0 and it go only goes up to 1.5. I could do a trick. I could uh, use the thrust plate multi-adapter, uh, expand it to 2 meters, and then just place some heat shields on the bottom of it. Even the legal heat shields, could I, I could just put 4 at the bottom or 5 at the bottom. But that's expensive stuff and also somewhat cheaty though I don't know if they needed a two meter heat shield I imagine they'd be able to build a two meter heat shield even with uh, limited technology let's say okay here we are now obviously it'd be easier to get into orbit from oh darn the stupid separatrons if anybody has any idea why they do this thing please tell me I mean no you know how I installed this thing so I don't see why the separatrons should be firing like this forgot to fix that wow electric charge is already going we're on the launch clamps why are the electric charge already going alright let's uh, let's get up there go well, it launches. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, okay. Making sure that we're on the right roll. We are.
Okay, so far so good. A major thing is what kind of heating we get at around around 30 to 40 kilometers, right? That's where we get a lot of our heating. And the question is whether the parachute is going to survive that, right? This uh, rare launch where we're not putting things in uh, fairing of any kind. So, given that, is this all safe or do we need some sort of fairing? I mean, mind you, uh, stuff like the Apollo command module was in the fairing. The, the escape tower pulled the fairing off as well. So it's not unusual to put your capsules in a fairing. Of course, uh, right now I don't think we have a fairing that would work, uh, except for, you know, the normal procedural fairings fairings. Uh, we'll just throw one on there. Oh, here we go. Let's monitor the parachute temperature. Unfortunately, this is not going very well for monitoring my staging. Okay, staging. Oh, something blew up. Okay, was it on the boosters or was it something critical? Uh, procedural nose comb burned up from overheating. That's funny. Wouldn't have expected that. But that's not a problem. I guess we'll uh, stay at this angle, given our time to apoapsis this is decreasing. We have to get this at a pretty, uh, pretty steep angle because of the service module completing the burn. Now, the thrust weight ratio of this should get pretty high, 6 at the end of it. And it's that end portion that I'm hoping will give us the boost we need to give the service module time to do its burn. I wonder why it says local control. Is that because of the avionics package? The avionics package gives local control? That's interesting. Okay, time to have apps is going up again. Let's try and optimize our trajectory a little bit more. We're pretty darn close to being no-go for orbit, actually. We're about a hundred meters per second off from being unable to make orbit. Okay, set. RCS on, and burn. need some RCS. Ooh, it's really jockeying it. Um, tell you what, let's just have SAS do it. Smart SS over does the RCS. I think we'll have enough time. I don't know if we'll have enough Delta V. I don't think we'll have enough Delta V. What we can do is observe the materials bay and uh, we can transmit that. And that should get us that contract done. Oh, it's going to take some time. It's only 4%, 5%. It takes a lot of time to upload the Science Junior data. That is very interesting information. Okay, how close are we to completing that? 47% uh, now. We added some science. Okay, well, uh, it didn't finish uploading the data yet, but it gave us a science block so that filled the contract. So at least this mission is paid for. Now, the trouble is whether we'll maintain communication. I think we will. I think we'll be good on communication right through. And we'll at least have that going for us. I'm not too sure we'll have orbit going for us. We'll have to see. If we have time, we can use the hydrazine here to get this portion into orbit and then deorbit it. I do want to deorbit it, I think. 
Well, I think I've got to deorbit it no matter what. I don't know if we're going to be able to complete this burn in time. Well, I don't think we have enough Delta V either. Well, looks like the service module is going to re-enter. I don't know if we're going to have much communication through an attempt to get into orbit, but we'll try. Okay, here we go. 60 units of hydrazine. Let's see where it get, gets us. Well, I don't think we're going to be needing to do a separate re-entry burn. Okay, yeah, well, this thing is going to re-enter. Let's not pretend that I'm going to have any control over it. Let's just see what kind of g-forces it experiences at this sort of trajectory. That'll be instructive. So it's probably going to be oriented retrograde by the time it... Uh, not quite. It's not quite retrograde yet. Okay, we have lost connection due to electric charge loss. Okay, we're at 4G now. Five G, nowhere near the most severe region yet. Six G. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, well, the Gaius unit doesn't have much of a heat tolerance. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that should be expected. It was a lot lower than I thought it would be, but yeah, all right. So uh, 6.8 Gs, though, definitely don't want to bring it in at that angle. All right, so let's take care of those barometer readings. So obviously, while this was a noble effort, it'll need some tweaking before we actually put a command pod with a Kerbal in on top of it. Uh, just a little bit more Delta V will do probably uh, 200, 300-ish, but uh, there's also the look of the thing to consider. We are Elegant Design Bureau here, and we need to make sure that things work out in a satisfactory fashion. So, I'll well, think about that. I think we better enable these avionics packages Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to control the rockets that would do a mission like this. And sure, I'll probe with Dobodyne as well. Okay, let's go with this. Okay, I've decided to use the Able Delta Avionics package here, and that allows up to 8 tons, hence 7.9 tons here. And I've gone back to the Vanguard booster, so we've got that going for us. And I've gone with the AJ-10... 42 which costs a little bit less in the second stage and so our cost is a thousand forty seven inside top fairing is simply a bundle of antennas and and barometers we're not going to decouple this it'd be useless on its own and so we're going to keep the the avionics package attached to it at all times we're not going to recover it we're going to transmit the data and so we're going to need to do that uh, before it crashes or gets destroyed by some sort of aerodynamic situation. But thrust weight ratio is pretty, pretty basic and we'll just have to make sure we aim properly. We need to get about, uh, well some of them are above, some of them are below. I think the best thing to do is to go for the aboves first. That's a little bit easier. Well, I don't know. In any case, we seem to be in a situation where, go where we're going to be aiming a bunch of ballistic missiles at Florida. So, well, let's see what happens. By the way, I picked the Thor Delta because it was the cheapest doable one. Oh, no SAS. Um, hmm, maybe we need a probe core after all. Hold on, let me retrieve this. Okay, so the avionics package does not have SAS. That's interesting. Is that true of all of them, or just some of them? It looks like uh, that's general... No, this this one, these guidance units have. It's these avionics package that don't. Uh, well, 
Explorer Probe Core has it, so we're going to just uh, go ahead with that. Very simple. No worries. And its mass is trivial. Its cost is a little bit unfortunate, but hey, that's what we've got to do, right? So, yep. Now, this vessel mass says 8.14 tons. I hope that means... Uh, including launch clamps and therefore we're all right if not we just burn a little bit and then we'll have control right <laughs> we'll have avionics um, okay so we need to figure out where we're headed and uh, it seems to be inland like I said we seem to be attacking Florida uh, let's just go for zone H2 first right activate navigation uh, zone H2 XJI which we need to be below 47 kilometers. Well, I think we're gonna end up smashing into Orlando, but let's see. All right, so here we go. Yeah, we're under. We're we're, we're good. So heading looks like about 2:30. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. Oh, wow. Um. <laughs> wow. Huh. Alright. Uh, Smart ASS off. Give me control. How strange. So, wait. I'm going to be able to control this and Smart ASS can't, huh? Okay. Well. As long as it's one or the other. Curious. Okay, RCS on, separate, and ignite. Alright, we might as well keep the fairing on. Okay, let's head straight for it now. God, there's a lot of control. Now I've action grouped the barometers, hopefully that'll keep. Okay, yes, and transmit that data. And have you fulfilled that contract? Yep, we fulfilled that one. Now, um, citizens of Florida, I will attempt to either make this explode or get it, get it a little bit into the, oh darn. No, 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 okay, well. Surprising that I can even do this, but okay, that was not my intention, citizens of Florida. Um, I was hoping to get to the Gulf of Mexico. Well, don't worry, the the toxic fuels will all be expended. It's just this avionics package. Should be harmless. So that uh, this is a uh, success. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do the other two quickly. We could have diverted to one of the other two, actually. I may for the next one. These two seem to be relatively in line, and we, we need to be above. So I think we can do both of them. So, uh, Kerman's Horizon and Ronry's Range. Uh, well, relatively coastal. Okay, so maybe we can do the other two with just one launch. Let's get to it. Okay, so Smart ISS is not to be trusted with this rocket, so I will maintain control with SAS. I'm activating navigation for Kerman's Horizon. Here we go. Above 53,000. I think this should be fine. Keep going like this for a while. Okay, separation time. Set, uh, and there we go. 
Okay, very good. In retrospect, trying to get both of these might be a little bit trickier than I thought. Is this going to be close enough? Yeah. Oh, uh... Okay, transmit that. Now, uh, quickly, quickly. This way. Wow, I can really divert like this. <laughs> okay, we got that one. But we, we really can't... Wow. I'm amazed we can even do this. I guess we're high enough that really doesn't care what we do. But uh, we're missing it. Okay, let's just uh, continue on to the Gulf of Mexico so that we don't hurt peoples. Okie dokie, one more. Okay, let's just wrap this up. SAS on, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Haven't even targeted yet. Let's target that. Okay, once again, need to be above, let's say above 60,000 meters. Well, I think this rocket sure makes the record for the most maneuverable rocket I've designed. Okay, set, uh, and go. Okay, uh, can we just transmit that to fulfill it, or? Yeah, okay. All right, uh, all right. So yeah, contract fulfilled. This guy will divert a little bit further south, I think. Uh, there aren't any important islands or oil rigs in this direction, right? So after this, I'll take a peek at the tech tree because we've got a lot of science to use, and then I'll call it uh, episode. Oh, there's an island, but we're we're off the coast of it. Should be okay. Which island? Well, I I think there's an island. It's very dark. Maybe just an oil slick. Okay. All right, contract filled onto the tech tree. So I don't know where we might get better heat shields. Heat shields will be a thing because while we have one at the bottom of the man pod, what we don't have is one for, for instance, the boilerplate uh, and other possible probes that we might want to return. Now we generally don't make our probes as big as the as the man pod. I'm having trouble figuring out where all the loop-de-loops this technology I, I suppose it must be this one the, this research is zero so I'll just get uh-huh yeah okay um, well that's 50 high-speed flight the problem is it's like I don't need any of this stuff I definitely don't need this general construction doesn't have anything in it but it, the technology is necessary to unlock stuff that I might not even be aware of for instance this has some unresearched requirement. The only connection I see is orbital rocketry. So could it be that uh, something else is necessary? Well, it's research. Aha, uh -huh. okay. General construction was necessary. Um, mature, mature stuff. They've changed quite a lot of stuff, haven't they? <laughs> C-130 cargo bay. Right. Why is C-130? We should get the pregnant guppy cargo bay, right? That would be much more useful. Pregnant guppy is one of few aircraft used to transport rocket parts. Oh wait, there's something down here. Second gen capsules. Requirements. Well, it says general construction and survivability. We've got those. But it's still not unlocked, so there must be some other thing that is required. 
Well, heck, let's just get that one. Ooh, fuel. Nope. You'd think with that we would get the happy little fuel lines, but don't see that yet. Oh yes, this, this has the long range. I'll get this. Okay, now we know how many parts there are in here. That's nice, but uh, can we... Wait a minute. Why Why is it... Sh heat shields. All I want are heat shields. Prototype space planes cannot research technologies over 100 science at this level. Aha, we, we do have that limitation. Well, advanced construction can't be bad, right? And we still got 146. Why is this under early Hydrolox engines? It's an AJ-10-137. It's not a Hydrolox engine. It is a very good engine, though. But, yeah, let me research that. And that pretty much does it, I think. All right, so we've got some technologies unlocked. Not necessarily parts unlocked, because we have to pay for those. But yeah, this is quite a tech tree. It's got squiggles all over the place. Gonna have to try and figure it out, I suppose. In the next episode, maybe what I'm going to do is is send up an actual pod. We're pretty close here. Send up an actual pod unmanned. See how it works. Possibly try and rendezvous with a Kerbal that needs rescuing. All right. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I think that's that'll, that'll be a good plan. Let's try and rescue a Kerbal. So uh, with that as the plan, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.